Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. Before we start this video, I want to show you some resources that myself and the team at Rebel have been working to perfect. So we uh, are finally able to show you right here the artist pad from Tablet Pro. It works perfectly with Rebel 4.1 and later. I have a tutorial on my resource page for Rebel 4. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it really just gives you all the different tools that you that you want to be using uh, right at your fingertips so you can resize, size, open panels, uh, do basically all the different things that you'd want to be able to do. And switch brushes, all that jazz. Okay, so here is the resource page I have here at the top, the guide that'll tell you what all the different buttons do, this one right here. There's an affiliate purchase link right here, this blue button. If you use that, it'll help me continue development as well as support my family. And I really appreciate you using that. If you need a stylus, I have one on the website as well. This designed for artists and I like it. It's the one I use all the time as opposed to the two service pens I have. So there's tutorials here, right here. There's an introduction. There's the essential series, the brush creator series, and I will have advanced tutorials here as well, including a lot of demos, the PDF, for Rebel 4.1 and later will be hosted here as well. And the artist pad for Tablet Pro, you can find it right here. The install guide for Tablet Pro is right here as well. And that will walk you through setting up the artist pad that you saw uh, just a moment ago. Let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. If you guys are using a stylus to do digital art on a Windows 10 tablet, this is a fantastic channel for you. So subscribe right now. Hi, this is Justice. In this last video about the brush creator, we're going to be talking about grain and canvas. So grain here, what we have first is scale. And this is going to be the size of the grain right here. So all of this is going to be dependent on what image you have here. Again, all of the black is blocking the paint. All of the white is letting it pass through. And the shape is going on top of the grain and wherever they combine and they're still white, that's where we're getting that image from. So I have spacing set again to 100 to demonstrate this clearly. So with all of these turned off and scale set at 100, I'm going to draw here across the screen. And you can see we've got that same grain pattern. Again, you can see these borders here because there's a black border right here. So that is what that separation is between these lines. So here you can see the scale. If I bring this up, that's going to make that much larger. If I bring this down, that's going to make that pattern smaller. Now, if I bring this back up to 100 and we look at the DPI setting, what this is going to do is this is going to synchronize the size of this pattern when you're using a different size canvas. So if we go over here to the crop tool and we choose image size and we change this from 200 to 400. Click OK down here. That's going to make a much larger canvas. Let's go ahead and zoom back in here. And if we draw here on the canvas, what we can see this size right here and the size underneath, these are the same scale of 100. So when I return this back to 200 and we click OK. You can see these are the same size. For this section, I have hidden all the panels except for the brush creator, and we're going to look at tiled texture. So, tiled texture here, you can see what I'm doing is I'm revealing the grain underneath. So it's not moving, it's, it's stuck to the page, stuck to the canvas. A random angle, let's go ahead and click right here. And when I do this, you're going to see that this texture that I'm revealing is going to start at a different angle. It's going to be randomized. And every time I pick the pen up and put it back down, it's going to be a new random angle. Let's look at angle jitter. This one, every single image it puts down in order to create that brush stroke is going to be at a random angle. Turn that off and let's look at random offset. So random offset here, 
means that this background image that we're tiling, when we start again, is still going to be in the same orientation, still vertical, still in the same place, but it's going to be pushed over a little bit. It's going to be offset from its original starting position. Random's flat offset. This is going to be similar to that angle jitter. This is going to put down a brand new offset every single time an image is laid down. Let's go up here and adjust so we have a size that will grow and shrink with pen pressure. And let's turn this off and turn on follow shape size. So here, this grain will grow and shrink with the size of the brush. So right over here, we've got a very little grain. And over here, the grain is larger because the brush shape has gotten larger. Now here, as we start, what you're going to see is that this is not doing anything. <laughs> and that's because we have rotation currently turned off. Let's turn on pen tilt and let's look at the difference here. So as I tilt my stylus, you can see it's following. And let's go over here and look at texture smoothing. And let's turn on random's flat offset. And zoom in here and let's turn off texture smoothing. The edges over here are anti-alias so that they are much smoother and nicer to look at. Let's look at the canvas settings. So the canvas I have selected specifically for this is CA01. I click cancel because we're not changing it. Now I have texture strength at 100. This is going to reveal what we're actually doing. Texture contrast, 100 is going to allow you to paint on the light colored spots. Texture of minus 100 is going to let you paint in the valleys. Here it's on the peaks, here it's on the valleys because our texture, our depth in Rebel 4 is based off of the canvas and the paint. They have actual heights to them. So again, this is painting in the valleys. You can see it's filling in all of the darker spots. This is filling in the lighter spots. If we bring texture contrast to zero, you're going to see it's going to be just a little more gray, a little less extreme. Now texture strength, we bring this down, bring it to 50. You can see it's creating more of a blend of the texture with the canvas and the peaks and the valleys. Now, if we bring this down to zero, what you're going to notice is this is going to ignore the texture of the paper. So the canvas is going to have no effect on the brush. This is going to be strictly based off of the grain and the shape and these other settings that we have here. Let's bring this up to 50 and contrast up to 100. You can see you can really control where that paint is going inside of the canvas. All right, so that's it for now for the brush creator. We've covered all the different topics here. Now, with the brush creator, you can make a lot of incredible brushes, and Rebel has done a fantastic job of giving you the tools to do that. Now, you've made some brushes and you want to share them, you would like to upload them, and in Rebel 4, that's now a feature. So right down here, we have an option to share brushes. I'm going to click here. You can create a group of brushes. You can select which brushes that you want to share. You can write a description. These are my personal brushes. I use these for painting or for doing pencil work or whatever it is you'd like. And you can accept the terms of use. And you can see here when you go to upload, this little area is going to give you your upload progress. Thank you guys for watching this series on the Brush Creator. Check out the other videos we have on Rebel 4, all the different tutorials and the new features that are available now. Until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day.